Welcome back. In our last episode, we took a look at how we wrapped the Genesis character around our body scan. And I promised you to show you a little exciting note that's called the brush note inside our 3DS wrap. And that is so that we can restore some of our original topology from the Genesis figure on our wrapped note. Let's take a look at it before we go ahead and bring our experiment into DAS Studio. So I've just connected the safe geometry node here. I'm going to go and take that away because we don't need it. We're going to need something else called the brush node. And that's also under geometry. Here it is, brush. And it takes a lot of inputs. And it's because it's so clever. And most of these are optional. The first one is the geometry that we want to brush on. So think of it as, you know, a mini version of ZBrush right inside our 3DS wrap. So we need to connect that. Then the second one is a reference geometry. That would typically be a scan, so I can connect this, but it's also something we don't exactly need. It's just there for visual reference, just if we wanted to make absolutely sure we're not undoing something that we might want to be part of that scan. I don't think I'm going to connect it because it just gets in the way visually. I, mean, I might just go, I might just connect it for now. And then the next input here, the geometry source, that is our original Genesis figure. That's this one here. And that is, as you remember, shifted now, considering that we now see something that no longer looks like Genesis. It is still human, but it's no longer the exact A pose, and it's, it's, it's very closely resembles our 3D scan. So with that in place and with the brush note selected, I can go back to the visual editor and I can see my brush options here. And these are very cool. So one thing that I said I'm going to fix are the fingernails. So let me go and zoom in on that. And you can see this little purple outline here now. And that is the original 3D scan. So we can see that our wrapped version deviates from that a little bit because it has less resolution. But more importantly, you can see that some of these fingers aren't exactly straight. I mean, the scan didn't have these ridges here. Uh, and this is kind of what the visual representation of the scan wants to tell us. It is, these are the visual differences. And in order to restore those or to smooth them out, I have several options here on the left hand side. So first of all, I'm going to use my square bracket keys to make my brush a little bit smaller. It's just like in Photoshop, square brackets to make it bigger or smaller. There's also a little legend here at the bottom left of the screen. Those are the shortcuts that you can use. Uh, the first brush here is the relax brush. Let me just show you what that does. It goes and so left click and drag to strike over your geometry and that'll smooth things out a little bit. Don't go overboard though because you can smooth things literally to somewhere where you think well that's really not what I want. So um, care should be taken when using that. Control Z undoes this. There's also on the, on the bottom right here there's the strength slider as well as a radius for how large your brush needs to be. I'll make that a little bigger so that we can see what's going on here. Strength, I'd say make that a bit lower like 10 or maybe even lower like 5. And then we can go and try this again. And just also just softly click and see what the what the results are. So this kind of smooths things out a little bit. And you can use this anywhere where you feel it's necessary. There are other exciting things. So you could also, if we just stick with the hand here for a second, there's also the move brush. That is something that literally moves geometry. If you're thinking you can go and hover over your 3D geometry, left click and drag, it literally goes and moves this whole area. Isn't that cool? So you can you can go to town, really spend your time and just move things around. It's always along the screen. So be careful with that. Don't destroy anything like I just have. But this is where that visual reference, the light purple thing comes in handy. If you wanted to line this up exactly with that, then you can do that. Also, make sure you do everything there, not just, you know, do a hack job like I do. If you press S, then the program lines up the closest viewing angle. So if I was kind of here and I press S, then I'm looking straight from the front. I'm going to go press Control Z to undo that and show you some other exciting tools here. So there's a sculpt brush. That's the third one down. I think you can also press just the number keys, like one, two, three, that'll select you the sculpt brush. And that behaves much like the basic brush in ZBrush. So left click and drag and over the surface and sculpt along the surface, and that'll just bring points out. Once again, I'm gonna go and click Control Z to undo my handiwork here. 
Inflate is something in which you can increase parts of your geometry. So just like the inflate brush that you know and love from ZBrush. Once again, Control Z will undo that because the coolest brush is literally the one on the bottom here. The, that's called the clone brush. And that is seriously magical because it will now look at our original Genesis figure and bring those features in to our current morph. And that is really cool with things that have horribly gone wrong. Like, for example, this thing that I've now sculpted in that I perhaps shouldn't have done. If I left click and drag over that, it'll just restore a very smooth curve here because that is what my original Genesis arm looked like. And this is something we can use on fingernails and eyes and the mouth and anything that's gone wrong, like the toes and whatnot. So fingernails, let me just zoom in there and just, uh, they look a little bit bulgy. And that's not what our original Genesis figure looked like, or that's also not what the scan looked like. So just by clicking on that, it'll just bring these features back and normalize them and approximate them closer to what the Genesis figure looks like. Ears are another good example and also the back of her head that we're going to take care of. So this ear looks fairly good, but I believe we can do with improving that. So left click and drag over that, and you can see that the ear gets smoothed out and almost restored to the previous glorious ear that the Genesis figure had. So this is a really, really cool feature. Like this bulge at the back, the Genesis figure doesn't have that, but with maybe a slightly larger brush, left click and drag over that bulge, and it'll be approximated to the smoothness of the back of the Genesis head. And that's just perfect. That's exactly what we want. It's also exactly what we need. Second ear, let's just have a quick nosy and restore that. And you can go and literally do that to every body part that you feel is necessary, like the eyes sometimes. They may get mangled a little bit. I think we're pretty we're pretty good here. I think we can we can live with what the eyes have here. But just in case, and this really depends on the scan uh, that you've got, you can just go and left click and drag over that to smooth these eyes out and just make them, you know, like make them perfect again. I'm just going to have a quick look at, I think, maybe this hand here, as well as the feet, and then we're going to move on just in the interest of time. You can see you can spend a lot of time in here, but it has so many cool tools. It is just, you know, it's marvelous. You can also, of course, just export the geometry and then put it into a program that you're more comfortable with, maybe ZBrush or maybe Blender. And then let me just go and restore that toe to its former glory. And in fact, all the toes here. Including the pinky toe. Is it actually called the pinky toe? Or do we say little toe? I don't even know. Do we have names for these guys? This little bulge on the outside of the foot here, you can you can just go ahead and, and uh, move that back to what it was like in the Genesis figure. Okay, a few more toe fixes. And then we're there. I wanted to show you one other thing, and that has to do with the brush size, just in case you ever need that. Maybe we'll make the strength a little bit stronger, maybe 25. Just in case you ever need this, and I'll show you this on the lips of the character. So currently, the size of my brush is determined literally by the white circle. And whatever is inside it will be influenced as I brush over my model. So in this case, it will be basically the whole mouth, but also the top of the lip and the bottom of the of the lower lip, kind of depending on how big I make that. If I didn't want to do that, and I'll just I'll just show you this on the lips. If I go and left click and drag on the lips now, you can see that both lips kind of get restored. And you might not want that. You might want to just work on the lower lip or just work on the upper lip. If I go and control Z that, I can change the distance of the actual, the, the visual circle to this here, the geodesic distance. And that will now mean that my brush only looks at the surface that extends from here. So if I do this, you notice that only the lower lip is affected. And if I click on the upper lip, then only the upper lip is affected without it affecting the lower lip. So that's kind of handy. Just keep that in mind. If you ever need to do this, I'm going to go and just undo what I did and, and be happy with this. It could probably do with a little bit of relaxation here to bring the structure of the lips absolutely in line. But in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. We want to go ahead and export our geometry now so that we can bring in this as a morph into DAS Studio.
So let's do that. It, ha it can happen in any viewport. You don't have to be on the main viewport, just uh, in the node graph here. Whatever comes out of my brush, we first need to accept it. Otherwise, we get an error message in a minute here. So that's down here. That's the accept button. If you click that, then whatever you've done here on the node brush is now locked in. So now we can right click again and head over to load save, head over to save geometry and then go and connect our brush output, our brush nodes output with the input of the save geometry node. And at the bottom here, we can give it a file name. So we'll click this little icon and navigate where we need to go. So in our case, that's on the desktop in 3DSK. And I'll just put it into OBJs maybe, or you can make yourself, you know, wrap output, DAS output, that sort of thing. I'm going to call it Cassandra Morph because that is what it is, or Cassandra G8 Morph. I'll leave it as that. Uh, output is an OBJ, which is nice. Once you hit save though, that hasn't actually saved your geometry. Just be aware of that. That's just put the file name into this field here. It hasn't saved the geometry. For that, you have to click this button, which is called compute current frame. And when you do that, then you have the geometry saved on disk. We already have our output of the Genesis figure. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to import our wrap output into the original Genesis figure inside DAS Studio so we can create a morph and hook that up and make it operational inside DAS Studio. Stay tuned for that.